And here we go. Hey, this is Flash Somebody at In a Perfect World on Tuesday, the 18th of February, 2020. And I got a special co-hostage tonight popped in to uh, help me not do a solo show because everybody knows I, I can... I prefer not to. Say hey, Rob. <laughs> hey, Rob. <laughs> and then, uh, Grimner, thanks a lot for all the help with uh, Cirque's little predicament on the internet webs. Grimner saved her. He's he's like a knight. <laughs> Good like that. But he'll save anybody. I mean, but it just happened to be Cirque tonight that was broken. So, we will say thank you to Grimner, and then uh, we say hey to the bots and the bodies that are lingering in the shadows of the real liberty media dot com chat. Some of them are dangerous, and what we've got for you tonight is Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Esmo, Chelsea, Donini, Circle. Hey, honey. Damn Van Meter, me, Graham Z, but she had to make a parts run, so she probably just didn't log off. And uh, Java Doctor 2, oh yeah, Graham Z was going to join us tonight, but something came up with the farm and she had to go run and get some stuff. So, boop. And now we got, uh, where was I? We got Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, you, Rome's Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dork, the Phantom. C C six six Chaskara Cyborg Noodle Duh E Man and Siv Frumpy Work Gromit Java Doctor J's Nines J's Kiss Pone Sauce Sock Puppets SLC Mike A Mikey Smarties The Holiest Roger and Z Picks so, and tonight, I don't know how I'm going to word the title of the show, but so far what I got is this. And me and Rob were going to try to discuss it because it's a really obscure kind of idea. But we believe stories that use secrecy as proof the stories exist. Or as proof that the, uh, yeah, that whatever the story represents, it, that it exists because we know they're a secret. What? You know, like uh, government secrets. Well, if it's such a fucking secret, uh, why are we talking about it? I don't get that. Do you get that, Rob? Not at all. Wow, fuck. I thought you were smarter than me. Damn it. Well, we need an expert. Boy, it's just a shame we can't get hands on here to explain all these intricate social details to us in a way that we could embrace them so that we right. too could vote for Trump and, you know, suck you cock. Oh, yeah, I know I say all kinds of horrible stuff on the radio, Rob. But, uh, hmm. But the first, well, the first secret society that always comes to mind is the one that took out the uh, Kennedys. Yeah. Well, people think it's conspiracy theory. And then what they do is they justify this, the conspiracy theory theory by saying, see, they believe in secret groups. See how crazy they are. Yeah. Uh, they're not secret anymore, really. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean, think they, they were secret. Still, they were secret, but if you've heard of them, they're not secret anymore. <laughs> That's the whole point in the way they dodged the responsibility of facing up for what they're accused of doing is by p pretending they don't exist. It's like the religious thing. Yeah. Yeah. All the fun people are going to hell and all the boring dregs that are going to go to heaven. I mean, who wants to go to fucking heaven and do what? You can't do it. You can't play. You can't gamble. I mean, first off, right there, there's a strike. For me. Yeah, you can't gamble in heaven. Why not? How yeah, do you know? Because good people don't do that. That's what the church people say. How do they know? Because they know they're spiritual, smart, religious people, man. Yeah. They got shit going for them. And they also know, you know, there's no weed right. in heaven. 
I mean, fuck it. Really, huh? But that's what I mean. If heaven was so wonderful, would somebody explain oh. the appeal? Oh, la, la. <laughs> Hang out with Graham. <laughs> 72 male virgins all looking for a girl. In Valhalla, no. Well, I just think like in any other religion, there's parts of the shit that oh. they leave out of the, you know, they, they write it in fine print. You know, sure, you get 72 virgins, all right, but they're all going to be guys, and you're all going to be looking for a girl. So, hmm. paradise? On- <laughs> I don't know, Islam. I I don't take it that way, because I, I know uh, Muslims in real physical life. I have for way before I ever left the U.S. I've How never... Many actually that? I'm sorry? <laughs> How many of them actually believe they're going to have 72 versions? I don't know. I don't associate... With, if that's like the you know overzealous uh, uh, Christian, the Jesus freak. See, it's the same thing. You've got moderate... You got extreme, and then you got people like me that I don't know, don't really care all that much. Yeah, what you believe in doesn't interest me unless it conflicts with with what I'm doing, and it hurts me somehow. Yeah, which generally doesn't happen. No, but on the internet it happens because on the internet I'm owned by the Americans, so when you know. Trump does something fucking awesome. I'm supposed to, you know, get out the bottle of fucking Vaseline and salute his ass, but I don't. <laughs> you know, but that's what people expect. Apparently, you don't shoot the magic sky club. No, oh no, they've got I their own. No, they've got their own here. It's no freedom for you. Oh, I've got more freedom as a guest than I would as a citizen. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I think so. And and the idea that, you know, I've never tried to pretend I'm going to be one of these people. They they seem to appreciate that more than not. I mean, there's, if, if I had moved to, say, Copenhagen and planned to stay there this long, I would have made a, be, a better attempt at Danish than I have. But being where I'm at, it's not even necessary. And it wasn't really necessary in Copenhagen either. But, you know, to suit the state and be part of the game and all that shit, I would have done it. But out here, it's kind of pointless. Yeah. Come from, I come from a, uh, one of the preferred countries, you know, when you travel. And then on the reality side of it, though, I don't think people judge each other here by the country because we've got a, not a big population of weirdos like me, but there's a, enough of us that we're there. We hold a little bit of acreage. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, we've got a Romanian beggar. We've got a, an American hippie living with a younger Dane. And then there's, you know, the Polish guys across the street, the workers. and Well, you know, different, there's just different, it's not as big as all. It's just a smaller version of a big thing. And it seems to me that uh, just not fucking with other people is enough. Right. That's that's how simple life is in, in a place. I mean, I don't think it was any different in the States, say, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, I and mean, you can even get small-town atmosphere. Well, when so. you were in Texas, what did you get? Uh, how did you get treated by the system, so to speak, when you engaged it? Uh, I avoided the system like the plague. Yeah, but, I mean, okay, for me, there's, like, a time when I got I dealt, married. I haven't dealt with the system in, jeez, I don't remember. It's been 2007. You might be legally dead then. Maybe. And in the case that you are legally dead, it's very difficult to prove you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm so tempted to look up the results. Can I use it as a defense? I couldn't have committed that crime. <laughs> yeah, 
they couldn't prosecute <laughs> you because that 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 straw man's been deceased by the system yeah. that it lives in because it it represents you but if it's dead how could it represent you? they can't yeah. figure a way around that and there's some good liars oh uh, a bunch of snakes in the grass all of them you think uh yeah by default Okay, so by definition of the job in the first place, you got to be kind of a cunt to want to make a living off of other people's misery. <laughs> yeah, it kind of goes with the I, I mean, you know, so this kid gets hit by a bus, and, you know, and they're going to sue the bus company or the driver, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, they get a lawyer, right? So this lawyer is going to go into the court and get them the best deal he can, you know, less his third. Yeah. Wow. I was thinking of doing that for a, a, a job as a career when I was a young kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really thought that would have been the, you know, that's where the money was. Sales is good, but law is better. <laughs> There's so much, so much insider trading goes on in law that you can't, you can't, um, prosecute anybody for it. Yeah. Okay, give you an example. When a like when a state makes a law that says you have to wear a safety belt in uh, when you're in a car, period. You know how much work that created? Well, yeah. Well, think about if you knew that before the law was written and the ink was dry. How many companies you could buy into? <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> Make everybody a little bit of money. Buy into seatbelts because it's going to be a law. they got to buy seatbelts. There you go. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's why everybody in Congress is a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> they go in broke and come out millionaires. They write laws to make what they want. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They, they don't write any laws. They, insurance company of that law. Okay, well, you're going to get to the meat of the act. They're, they're the front men for. They're the front men for bigger things, Rob. I realize that. Yeah, they don't write shit. <laughs> they don't even read the shit they're passing. <laughs> hey, no, I saw that Patriot Act performance. It's a joke, man. And wow. then you want to vote for these fucking yahoos. Where 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 were you when they read the Patriot Act on sped read speed read it in front of Congress on uh I guess this guess it was live stream or some shit, but uh no, it might have been the inter- I don't know why they'd have a video of that. <laughs> thing was what, a thousand pages or some shit? It was huge. It was like four phone they books. Read that shit on live. It was just amazing. <laughs> Fucking week of reading. Right, but the first of September, we get hit by these terrorist attacks. And, and here, it, what was it, late October or November, they've got four phone books of you know laws to fix it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's just been a go. Since, uh, shit. Since the first time they bombed the fucking towers. Yeah, well, who got credit for writing that? I think um, I don't. It's somebody in somebody was somebody under Obama. Maybe it was Biden that got the the credit for writing up the Patriot Act. Ah, I can always Google it sometime. Google, because Google will give you the answer. Google you're looking your for. Friends. Dr. Go will help you find things. I don't know. Well. <laughs> I I want to believe in it uh, <laughs> that a secret society could fix the same mess that it created. What do you What do you think of that? I'm sorry, Trumpy got me distracted with a cat. Oh, see how you? Oh yeah, Rob, where <laughs> is this your cat? Oh no. Anyway, hold on. Well. <laughs> I want to be distracted by a good, you know, secrecy story. And it just the government secrets, business. These people are insane, right? They act like there's 87 fucking ways to build a car. You know, 
There's different designs of the same fucking car. Wow. Should yeah, I run that? So it's got volume. Or, it's probably got a volume thing on it. I'm going to save that till after this show before I look at it. I'm scared now. Because you guys, man, you're funny. Anyway. So. What were, we were, I was, um, I know it's such a weird topic in the first place. And the only things that really come to the forefront when I say that secrecy thing is, you know, the government secrets, and corporate secrets. Well, if these people all make the same fucking product, why is there secrets in their shit? You know, what, what? As an average consumer, I mean, what does it make you think of? Oh, it's they're all just fighting for the latest little tweet or gadget or Right, but they, they sell this intellectual property crap to every Tom, Dick, and fucking area around now. They all think that you copyright it, you own it, or you patent it, and it's yours. I'm just, just ignorant fucking lame shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you talk about talk about a world full of lazy fucking slobs too busy to read a book. That's us. As a collective. See? Because if I could get people to do shit, which I can't, because they don't want to do it, well, I would lead them down the book, read this book situation. If you uh, yeah. read this book, it will fix your outlook on that particular problem. Because some books are written to solve problems, and other books are written to create the problems that we think we're fixing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my favorite one is? What's that? The Constitution. Oh, yeah. So, you know how I ever explained in detail how I understand the Constitution and the Revolution and all that shit? Uh, hmm. We've talked about a lot of things. <laughs> okay, well, here, let me give you the rundown, because mine, mine is, it makes me laugh. I don't know about you, but it makes me laugh. So... I'm going to go out and I'm going to go steal some Indians' land, okay, in America. All right? Are you with me? Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to occupy their fucking land and kick them all the fuck off it, kill them. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to take that land. Now, let's say it's land that belongs to them that they don't even use. It's just their land. But I'm going to take that, not kill anyone. And then yeah. I'm going to fight with England to see which one of us can rule the land. And yeah. we're we're going to call it a revolution. Yeah. For the, so the history books have something special to tell the people that read it, you know, 200 years down the road. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I see the constitution as a contract. And I didn't ask or I wasn't asked to sign any fucking contract. I was tricked into it a few times. Okay. And I've done it a few times willingly out of knowing better but needing that freaking passport. <laughs> yeah. So, but in my, see, I justify my kissing the ass of the state by saying at least I got something for it. <laughs> it wasn't just me bending over and, you know, I paid a lot of money for the papers, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. it was, well, you know, the money invested into all this crap turned out to be a good thing. <laughs> Got you where you are now. Probably, I don't know. I really don't know how to explain any of how this all happened. But if I wanted to go over to America and take somebody's land away from them and occupy it and just then start an argument with the king, queen of England to see who owns it, Hello? I mean, does this even ring of reality to you in the 21st century when you think back in the days they did this? How long did it take to get from England to America? 
<laughs> six weeks. <laughs> to sail from one coast to the, yeah, it was it wasn't easy either. In six to eight weeks, depending on the weather and how good your navigator was. Right, and, and now we can do it in a matter of hours and electronically instant. So hmm. maybe is it possible? Now, we've been bullshitted about some stuff. <laughs> Oh, it's most definitely assured. Yeah. Well, you got a constitution, Rob. No, I don't have no constitution. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> you don't have a you constitution. You see my name on that motherfucker? Wait a minute. But, see, they tricked you into accepting it later in life. Don't you remember? Oh, well. Did you forget? Mm, no, you're one of the few people that doesn't document. So yeah, it's the it's the thing that keeps you from here. If you if you were documentable, you'd probably come visit. But uh, the system yeah. has well, the system punishes us legally by um, with holding the right to travel as a punishment. Like yeah, we, among other things. Yeah, to have a bank account. Uh, oh yeah, what else? Traveling. Do you, yeah. Getting a job. <laughs> Getting voting. Uh, voting. There you go. Well, there's some good things that come of it then. You know, like not having to vote. So yeah, I what, vote if I wanted to. All right. So that they got the electoral college. Do you think those guys make judgments for the guys in prison that can't vote? They vote for them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, death row votes. No. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? We're going to give them an extra week so they'll vote no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the bankers have bought it all. Well, actually, I think it's deeper than that. I mean, the bankers are the front men for this armed group of fucking thugs. Okay. And whoever these people are behind everything that we're looking at, I think they do some serious murdering and threatening to keep the shit going on, going on. Yeah? Yeah. That the the people that know better would rather live and just be silent and, you know, survive than come out and talk about this stuff that we see that's true, that if it was to be exposed as true instead of made a mockery of as a conspiracy job, well, I think life would be different completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you got us living in this secrecy thing, Rob, and I'm getting a little bit tired out of it if you want to know the truth. I think the, somebody out there has a secret weapon. That everybody's scared shit, so... Oh, yeah, 5G? Not even that. I'm just thinking more along the lines of scalar weapons and oh. that kind of stuff. But look at they've got the coronavirus doing some pretty serious ass whooping right now. Yeah, they want that. Wonder why. I'm talking about things that can destroy entire continents. You think, oh, wait a minute, you really think it's gotten that that technical where they can do that much damage? I think the technology exists, yes. Oh, the technology exists, right. But is there a bozo out there with a, a big enough balls to really be the guy in history that did that? Because that would, you know, that would be like Hitler stuff. You sure. know, bad grip, sure. Stalin, sure. Mao Zedong. Sure. You're up there with the heavy hitters, you know, the Mandelas and the George Bushes, because now you're a fucking serial mass murderer. (laughs) Why else could one small, tiny, little bitty country ignore every UN mandate thrown its way? Are you talking about Israel? Oh, how did you guess? Well, because they're openly printed about and they're above international law. They don't answer to anybody. Yet. Answer nobody, anybody. nobody no big enough will confront them. They were, they just bombed the shit out of Damascus. It's like nobody's 
seems to notice. Well, they're working. Yeah, they're working yeah. their way into Iran. And this is a look. This is a chess game. I don't think lives, concerns, or business or any of that shit matters. This this is the Rothschilds playing chess with real life. Mm. Let's see what happens if we do this. Why? Well, let's see what happens if we do that. And then they just tell the public it's something different, and they do it. Well, yeah, because they know nobody's going to actually look into anything. Then when when things are looked into, Rob, but when something's looked into, who looks into it? The people that fucked it up. (laughs) Yeah. Well, of course, nothing's wrong. (laughs) Found no evidence of wrongdoing. (laughs) It's too much. uh, uh, Why? I don't know, man. Like Beetle says, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then I tell him not all of us. And I truly don't. I don't believe. I don't feel fucked at all in any way, shape, or form. Well, no. No. I've got a per. I mean, not I, in the sense that you're able to hmm. live and have a place to sleep and eat. And right, because uh, I'm, I'm not a greedy. Um, yeah, I'm not a, a greasy, lot. slimy. Rick, Rick. Come on. <laughs> I'm a nice guy like you. In terms of what are we what are we missing? What are we missing out on? Me and you? Being deprived of. I mean uh, wouldn't it be much more wonderful world if all of your friends and everybody you knew had uh lived in abundance and was able to join in and share and, and not be worried about paying the fucking rent next month. Hey, let's have a barbecue. Yeah, everybody pitch in. Have a freaking feast. But, oh, no, I can't spare it. I got to freaking make rent. And my gas bill's due. And I need new tires on my car. And, uh, it's just all these things that should just be little nothings that become big things because you're fucking barely scraping by because you got to work your ass off to make us some other asshole rich. Doesn't, isn't that what we're living for? Not what I'm living for, but wow. Well, maybe you're just selfish. Yeah. Well, that you're gave in too easily there. You're supposed to fight with me about it. Okay. Nothing wrong with being a certain amount of selfishness is necessary for survival. Necessary. If yeah. I'm not worth a fuck physically, okay, at my age, for one, why would Cirque be married to me? You know? Well, I don't get that anyway, but well, the, well, no. mo- well most people <laughs> would, would assume though that uh it would be because I have money. Da, 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 da. And she's chasing after somebody that's got a little money, but that's not the case. I don't have I don't have any money. My brother has money, me not so much. But you know that's why. <laughs> well, you know, because I don't really value the shit in the first place. I don't care about it. People, they say, well, that's because. You got some, but there's never been a shortage of money in my life because there's always ways to make money that don't involve government contracts or government's contracting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because some people are like, wow, they're so uh, devout to this state thing that they go tell the state all their personal business. And this is before the internet. I, I wouldn't even know what it's like now. Oh, it's, it's crazy. I'm still not over going to the freaking horse races the other day. That was surreal. Mm, tell us all about it. It's a talk show, Rob. And I'm well, sure you've got a place. I think I talked about it on, my, on the last time I was on. Did you? Oh, uh, well, hell. Yeah, we went to the horse races and got there just... Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the not 
not bowing to the flag thing. Yeah, and we just got there and been walking four or six blocks or whatever. I didn't feel like standing up, and of course I wouldn't have stood up anyway because I'm not a flag worshiper, but uh, none of us stood up, the three of us that went. And uh, I mean, I looked around, and everybody's just <laughs> standing there with their hand over their heart. And, oh, da, 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 da. oh my God, it made me want to puke. And, and then we got shush because. Guy, one guy that went with us uh, was talking about something. Anyway. And then we lit a cigarette and that was it. The people behind us got up. <laughs> That's the beauty of smoking. The fun of it. Oh, is, well, in, and then as she's walking off, they yeah. can't even stand for the anthem. <laughs> but, you know, the beauty of smoking is when when it irritates other people, at least I know they're not tolerant people. Yeah. See? So, I know, you know, it's like, it's not that they don't like the cigarette. It's the way they behave about not liking the cigarette. Because I've been around some guys that smoke a cigar that would, the smoke was like, wow. Yeah. Beaver ass yeah. again, huh, Charlie? Anyway. But, uh. <laughs> Well, it, but then the beaver ass is supposed to smell like, uh, what's that, vanilla. Yeah. Well, there was things about it being used in food products, and it's not because the the scent that they get from the beaver butt, this, that gland, is only used, they say, is only used in making it uh, scent products, not food products. But it, yeah. was, it was a lot of fun making jokes about, you know, imitation beaver butt <laughs> what the fuck anyway I still want the real shit yeah well, hey you want to tell us I need how, to do, order some vanilla beans and... pitch your uh, pitch your snake oil for a few minutes and uh, throw a link in uh, the and throw a link in the RLM I'll copy it to the anybody's notes anybody's heard about my snake oil oh okay not, that's it wow I know where it's at see now now I think that gives you a better position anyway, personally, because you got word of mouth. And this is the internet, so. I, I've done my part. Yeah, you give it a year. <laughs> You'll be avoiding the question because, hey, man, do I got to work all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember selling certain commodities to the public as a younger fella, and at times where certain things were in demand. <laughs> and being on the uh, on the selling side of certain products in life can make you a very popular guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, and you get the that, right product. Well, no, you got see what when you're purposely selling a product, what you need is people that want it. So there's your problem right there. And we're in 2020 now. So everybody's got something to sell you. and da, da, da. It's an overwhelming fuck off oh, world yeah. right now. But People now, have been merchandised to death. Yeah, but see, now you just go fuck it. Let Now you just sit back and let, let life take care of itself. That would be my advice to you, sir, if you want to hear it. Yeah, I'm pretty much on that path. Good. <laughs> well... Bucking your head against the wall. Hey, I'm not doing this if I need the money. Well, that's, that's beside the point, the point, Rob. It's just bucking yeah. your head against the wall, uh, trying to explain something to somebody else. Never works out very well. Yeah, yeah I'm not depending on this to pay the. <laughs> I know that. Money. I know. I know. Anything like that. I, I, mean, I, I found something that seems to work and has worked for friends of mine, and thought it'd be something cool to. Turn people on to you. I make a few nickels on the way, but so what? I don't care. Well, you know, Grim Grim made the. Uh, let's do a little begging here. He made the uh, donation drive minimum that he needed to keep the bare necessities of Real Liberty Media dot com alive for the next year. But he's still accepting donations, you know. So if you got a yep. few bucks and you're, you know. Online. 
yeah, you don't want to blow it on heroin or maybe prostitutes or something. Throw it at Grimm yeah. instead, and he'll use it for the shit that comes up. And if you get enough extra, I mean, you can add some more bells and whistles to the program. Well, he yeah. really he really helped us. He helped it, us out tonight, so I felt especially yeah. Grumbly. And I know he he puts a lot of time into this. I mean, it's basically what he does. So. Well, it's his playground. He's a coder. So yeah. this is like, wow, this would be like an engine to a mechanic. Yeah. Or maybe a yeah. puzzle to an yeah. artist. Yeah. He's going to do it. Well, he's going to do it either way, but. This, yeah, the, this is more, the more social. He with, the better he can make it. So. Well, what's your particular favorite part of the real liberty media dot com? Uh. I like the dork table mostly. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. Well, that's... And I've been through a few changes on the dork table over the years with uh, experimenting with other personalities to try to balance it. So, yeah. I mean, I know I like to talk and I got a lot to say and all that horseshit, but being alone doing it is not the same as having Rob along to interrupt say, yeah, but what about this? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oh, yeah, Grimner says, what? No heroin or prostitutes? Probably not. But, mm-hmm. hey, you could always do a GoFundMe, and I'll probably, I'll bet yeah, you, I'll, I'll bet you, heroin. hey, <laughs> I want to get a heroin addiction so I can kick a heroin addiction so that once I kick it, I can replace it with a prostitute addiction. Need four thousand dollars immediately. Uh, okay, you starting a GoFundMe or something? Yeah, for Grim, so he can get some heroin and prostitutes. I give him give him reasons to do it. Because gotcha. gotcha. heroin is a really interesting drug. It's probably the most interesting drug I ever tried myself. And there's other things yeah. I wanted to try, I didn't get to try though. That maybe someday in the future I will. But I don't bash things unless I know, except for the only thing I'll bash that I never tried <laughs> was uh, methamphetamine, the speed, the cookie, yeah. the cooking shit, and that smoke or whatever. Nah, wouldn't do that. And I'm a smoker, Rob. But I was afraid of that freaking speed pipe. Like a, I was like a scared child around that shit. Good. Stay the fuck away from it. But... I'm not afraid of most anything. I can't think of anything else that if I understand it and if you use it, there's so many different ways to use drugs. You know, the pharmaceutical and yeah. the black the black market shit. That but people don't know this stuff, right? They think it's they all see it so dangerous, blah, 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 and then they go to their fucking doctor and they get prescriptions for pills that destroy their their kidneys. Yeah, you can buy illegal drugs and take a chance on getting some kind of impurity in it or buy pharmaceutical drugs and know for sure that you're getting some crap. Well, you know, what I learned in the black market, like even stealing at swap meets as an example of black market back when I was younger, because my life, I grew up, the tax man wasn't up everybody's ass. You could do things and make transactions and not write about it. Nobody knew. That was your business, right? But now, shit, things have changed. But uh, we depended on repeat business because we didn't, you know, uh, things were smaller back then, so to speak. You didn't have, you didn't have as broad a range to, you know, travel around and do things. You were still small and had to stay in a certain area because you can only know so many people. You know, and have time to and interact with those same people regularly so they trust you and that, and that, and that takes time. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just do that everywhere you go. That's what snake oil salesmen are for. <laughs> well, yeah, some of us have yeah. that dazzle thing. I can do uh, yeah. it. Yeah, I'm looking for some. You know any? <laughs> I can, well, I, it's, hmm. I just think it's what they call the ability to bullshit is simple as that. 
fast ah, fast on your feet thinking of some bullshit answer. Whether it's true or not or real or not, what the fuck does that matter? Ever read the Constitution, Charlie? <laughs> what is we the fucking people in the first goddamn place? Who the fuck were they talking about in 1776? And they're all dead then. Wait a minute. Hmm. I got a problem with not being a party to a contract I'm, I'm involved in. You know, I, I mean, I'm one of the few. I, I'm like you. We're so much alike, it's hard to do a shoot. Do you claim so. to be a U.S. citizen? Do I claim it? Did you? Did you? Huh? Huh? Did you? I think I had to, yeah, because they had to produce some documentation. So, yeah, the, the U.S. owns me. I, that's what I bitch about all the time. There's your connection to the Constitution. Right, because I signed, that's what I'm saying, because I signed all these fucking documents that bind you to this shit under the guise of freedom when it's absolutely the opposite of it. You're subservient to this group of fucking dead people. <laughs> and you know what? I don't, I don't think I do anything in a day that requires the... Um, protection of government because my rights are being violated by anything that fucking happens in the first place. Only by government. Yeah, but they don't do it to me. I, I'm no, too small, man. Private people are violating my rights. Well, I got robbed once that was a violation. But, uh, generally speaking, government is the biggest violator of rights on the planet. Um... Always have them. Yeah, pretty much. Well, if you read the internet from the wrong angle of the thing, what I see people do is blame the people for the acts of the politicians. You know, like uh, like all these I people for their for their own actions, uh, just because they're being ordered to do something, they're still responsible for their own actions. Yeah. Okay. Well, you just got red flag laws and. Uh, where Grimm lives, okay? His state just passed yeah. me, he said, like a week ago. Yeah. So, well, hey, who supports this kind of crap? Morons. Well, and they base it on the on all these TV shows they've been watching for 50 fucking years about made-up medical crap on television. It's nonsense. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever been into a hospital for anything... And you come out of that hospital and you can say that you're a hundred percent satisfied with their job. I think you're full of, I think you're full of shit. Maybe maybe hey, they kept me alive. Okay, fifty percent right there. Okay, they kept you alive. Now, how many infections did you get as a result of the surgery? <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, out of two surgery visits, one time I got infections. Well, isn't that sweet? <laughs> well, yeah, because I had to have two separate surgeries to do. Uh, I had four hernias go all crap at once. So, yeah, but four of them repairs at once would have been too much. I'm too little for all that. So he split them into two separate operations six weeks apart. And the second time I go, then that one gets infected. <laughs> so, I, uh, I was happy with the surgery, but not happy with the results of the, you know, other stuff that happened. Yeah. Well, when you when you uh, think of, but Rob, when you think of medicine, don't you think of perfect? Of what? It should be delivered in a perfect fashion, not in a happenstance. <laughs> Well, 80% of the people don't make it for five years, but after that, whoa, no, wait a minute. And I don't even know how to even say that part. How can you? <laughs> You're just practicing, man. Right, but how can you have right. your pudding if you don't eat your meat? <laughs> so, people. You make your own damn pudding and tell the rest of them to go to hell. Right, but see, how do they get us to to go along with these uh, 
these yeah. they're just fucking lies, right? And they're not lies, but they are lies. Like this high blood pressure thing I went through. Well, if I had a read the damn insert to the uh, prescription medication bottle and paid uh-huh. attention to the details of what the fucking thing said, it would have said it's side effects. It has a fucking list of side effects. Well, you know what side effects to a drug are? <laughs> All effects to a drug are side effects to a drug. Just change the name of the drug and side effects are. It's the same fucking thing. Well, yeah. I can tell you this. The you, whole side thing is, is meant to distract you anyway. It's not side effect. It's an effect. Yeah. But see, cannabis does not do that to us. No. There are no it, side effects from using it, cannabis it, it, as a remedy for what it ails you. Some people do have side effects, actually. I knew a guy would get hives really bad. Mm. Take a and he'd break out. Okay, let me rephrase so, that. I have that's like more of an allergy than a side effect, though. Okay. I guess I'll do that. But I've done everything with weed except stuff it up my butt. And I'm telling you, I've never had a, a negative reaction Except for the stuff I bought in Copenhagen made me angry. That I so remember. What you're saying is that you, you haven't tried all the ways of doing it, huh? No, I won't go the suppository thing. <laughs> I think my wife would start looking at me a little funny if I you were. You really a, say for sure. Yeah. Hey, honey, I'm going to wear a suppository for a couple. Whoops. Nah. <laughs> she, nah, she wouldn't like that too much. So, nah, we're going to put that one off. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, there's all kinds. Oh, right. Like I was harping about heroin. You can smoke heroin. You can uh, you can shoot heroin. You can put it in your freaking food and eat it. There's ways to use it besides this mainline thing. But yeah. the, the thing about that drug is it's a physical reaction to a drug, not not like a hallucinogen or any of that. It physically makes you like. Feel good. It's very addictive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> the average person in life, they fall in love with that, and they they go. That's what they want to do all the time. There's no balance in their life in the first place. So you know, and that'll take like one out of ten people in the world might try it, and then out of those one out of ten, one out of ten of them. Might be a junkie. Yeah. Because it's not an attractive... Uh, <laughs> the lifestyle and all the shit you read and see and hear about it. But the drug itself is very attractive. So, what the system figured out how to do... <laughs> they synthesized this shit. And they relabeled it. And then they got everybody dr- um, hooked on them. They call it opioids. And they go, wow. Yeah. What do you think opioids are? <laughs> Heroin. <laughs> yeah, well, what Drug, is, opium plant. I see Hansel on the, on the site all the time, whining all the fucking time about drug addicts and this addicts and that addicts. Um, well, people right. go to the fucking medical system that, that he's dying to, to support, and they pay them fucking money, insurance, and blah, 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 to give them drugs no. that oh, they protect yeah. in Afghanistan in the military. And then the wackadoodles that are all state lovers. Hell, the military's over there guarding the fucking poppy fields. Yep. Still. 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 How many fucking... And then and then they get... Yeah, and then they get people like Hans to complain about drug addiction. Yeah. Well, they're losing way more people to legal drugs than they are to illegal drugs. But... The press is owned by the same people that own the banks. (laughs) The same people that own the politicians. And if you try to tell a voter that his politician is a fucking employee of a billionaire doing fuck all for you, they'll go, oh, no, no, no. Right? Now, here comes the good part, Rob. If you tell them... Don't admit that the politicians all suck. No, no. I, I found that out. But if you tell the voter 
that the politicians will tell you they do not vote for you. They speak about it openly. They're there to they're there in your stead because you're too ignorant to know what to vote for. That's how they look at that. And they're not representing you. Every, almost everybody will admit the politicians, oh yeah, they're all lying scumbags, they're all corrupt, rah, 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 rah. But if you don't vote, you're the problem. What kind of problem am I? <laughs> I want to be identified. I don't just want to be a bland problem. I want to be called a certain, be like a title. Yeah. No? The problem. Ah, that's boring. Yeah, but that's basically the end of that one, too, and it's that simple to a common man. Yeah. Well, I think we've just been bullshit in understanding what common is. You know, common is not a financial state of living. It's an intellectual state of living. And you can also have a college education, and you can live in a nice big clean house and have a nice car to drive and still be a fucking idiot. See? Okay. Yeah, wealth does not define your character or your humanity or whatever the fuck it's called this month. (laughs) I don't think so. I've known people that didn't have any fucking money at all, share everything they had with you, didn't give a fuck, take it all, leave it, do what you want. There's there's been studies done on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've known people that had excess that wouldn't pay for fucking lunch. It was like... What? You got all that? You're going to make me buy my own fucking lunch? What kind of prick are you? Yeah. Rich prick, you fucker. That's He's what rich. kind of prick I am. Well, He's rich. He's all right. Prick. <laughs> Why do people, so they're so fascinated and uh, captivated and ad, they admire, like, let's use Trump. Gr- gr- Grim hates politics. So let's talk about somebody that's not even a politician. Running the biggest political game on the fucking planet, and this guy got in there, didn't even get voted in. Some other people decided, oh, well, he, he needs to be doing this instead of her. Well, you're the popular vote, but no, no, no. And I looked at it, two wonderful things came of that, in a, in a sense, two wars. Kept the war against women alive. Oh, they're keeping the women down, right? Mm hmm. See, they don't want a woman. No, well, let me tell you guys a secret. Hillary is not a woman. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. My wife is a real woman, and my wife could not do the horrible crap that that woman brags about doing. No. So that's how I'm defining that word in this particular question. She's even human. Well, you know my wife from the Internet. Uh, and you've heard her talk on the radio. She's she's a nice woman. Uh, have you ever yeah. heard Hillary? I uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, how would you like to be out in the middle of the ocean on a boat alone with Hillary? <laughs> huh? Uh, huh? <laughs> just Hillary? No, yep, no. just you and Hillary. <laughs> No witnesses, Rob. <laughs> but people are waiting at the other end for both of you to get back. <laughs> Guess who's not coming? Neither of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Told you. Because Hillary's not a man. She's not a woman. I don't know what she is, what you identify her as completely. I, I think she needs a new category. I mean, actually, she was she was <laughs> she was married to Bill Clinton. She's got so many strikes against her. She was married to Bill Clinton. Chelsea Clinton was her offspring. <laughs> I mean, no, the only that. thing that could have been worse is if she'd have been related <laughs> to George Bush. Oh, well, they're all related. Damn, you mean? <laughs> I know that, Rob. But they're you all know, related, if if nothing else, distantly, but. All but one of the presidents have been related to each other. Yeah, but the families are all in touch with each other at a financial level 
well above what we yeah. do. Okay. Oh yeah, they all right. Well, those Mary was trying to get me with it. Well, I'm Rh negative. Yeah, but you're not in the wealthy part of that fucking bloodline that controls shit. Yeah. And you can't let. How do you explain it? Old gangs don't have new members. Yeah. And the reason old gangs don't have new members is because they know they can't trust anybody but each other. Yeah. <laughs> that's how they that's how found out what they were doing in the whole world. See, and it brings us to the secret well, society conspiracy jargon shit that I started talking about in the first place. Yeah. Well, because there's no secret society. Okay, well, then would you explain to me in five, maybe yeah. ten sentences, why is hemp illegal? It's not anymore. Yes, it is. Yeah, New York City, uh, there was a shipment, a million dollar, I heard um, Grim read about it. It was a million dollar shipment, the cops busted it, mistaken yeah. it for hemp. For cannabis. That was not, because it was illegal. It was because the cops were fucking ignorant. It doesn't matter, Rob. That's the... And if they weren't ignorant, what difference does that make? There are armed fucking morons out there with fucking guns and oh. radios that can fuck your life up in one minute or less just because they feel like it. Yeah. And you, you call that freedom. Though. See, this is what irritates my wife so much is <clears throat> all the hoopla about America being free and wonderful and exceptional, and then she knows you guys. Yeah. Doesn't sound the same. Sounds like two different places. Right. Of course, and then she's lived with me for these years. But you've got uh, the delusion, and then you have reality. Well, <laughs> I've got my reality. And my reality, verbally, is so uh, varied. There's so much to it that most people think I'm just telling shit, you know, talking shit. So mm -hmm. over the years, you know, outside of the radio, I don't, I don't bother. There's not much to say as far as, you know, nose to nose people. But it's fun to do it on the radio. But fuck, I'm sixty fucking years old. I live in Denmark. I mean, how weird. How much weirder can it get than that in the first place? <laughs> 2020 of all times. And you know what? I'd, I'd like to see a revolution. People living where they didn't grow up. <laughs> well, it's nothing wrong. I don't know. Wrong, right. Ah. People should just be uh, able to do what makes them feel good. and what makes As long as you're not hurting anybody else. But then when you define what that word means... <laughs> You know, all well, those words, hurting somebody else could be, uh, come on, there's got to be some kind of common sense to it. So, you know, honey, do these pants make my ass look fat? No, honey, you always look fat. Slap. You know, wait a minute. You know, because there's, there's a time to, to you tell your ass these pants look fat. <laughs> well, I, I was just making a joke about people's vanity. Oh yeah, because I'm I'm an under eater, so I have that struggle to to stay at a certain weight eating when I don't want to eat, which is yeah. the opposite of people that love food and they can just overindulge in. I got the exact fucking opposite problem, and it's so frustrating, you know, because <laughs> it's so rare. I suppose. Yeah. Hell, I can. Yeah. yeah. Life, man. See, it's it's all about balance, right? This is what I trick in you, you can be 50 pounds overweight and I'll be skinny again. How so? I, was, I said I'll trade you. Oh, yeah. It, I, but trade there's no, there's no secret to it or anything. So I think it's one of those biological that some of us, we're, whatever we are on the physical that other people look at, that's just an external expression. You know, I was 105 pounds until I hit 30. Yeah, but see, I, look at all the work I, you'd have to go through to, to stay there. Right? No, uh, 
I didn't have to do anything to stay. You would I mean, now. Not then. I would now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, to yes. even get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, it's got its it's got it both its good side and its bad side. One being small, I'm pretty strong for the size I'm at. But I have my limits and I I don't want to break myself doing shit. So you know, I'm never adverse to other people helping me. <laughs> and it, sometimes it's the funniest shit, like in the grocery store. Something will be up high, and there won't be anything safe looking enough to step on it. To you know, that I won't uh-huh. destroy something trying to climb it like a five year old. So I just yeah. wait around for somebody taller. <laughs> and I go, hey, can you do me a favor and grab me this? And every time, male, female, doesn't matter, they go, sure. <laughs> And they don't laugh at me, but they're you know they're very. Uh, it's it's one of those yes. things you can't be mad when you do this for somebody shorter. It's like a rule, <laughs> right? Well, I'm I'm excellent. Anyway, <laughs> do you feel revolution is in the air? Uh, I think they're pushing for that. Okay. Ah, finally. Who is they, right. and what did you see? Uh, I think uh, it's just been coming for a long time. They've been dividing the people, and they they want it. The system. Powers that be. The, the power. Okay. Yeah, whatever you call them. Well, I the see the same thing. Do yeah. you want to be more specific? Yeah, well, I see the same thing, that it's the system is pushing, pushing it on it. You know, they're funding all these groups of antagonists, Antifa. Um, they're, I'm sure they're behind some of the right groups, too. But, yeah. Well, I spend more time we, being informed about France. Trumpers, blacks against the whites. And, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, socialists against the capitalists. And, yeah, but yeah. you're Americans. You're supposed to be a diverse society of all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I think it's, this whole thing is just a big scam. All of it. Where I live, oh, yeah. where you live, where, where people that I don't, I'll never even meet live. If there's some system running shit, it's not good for you. There's always a the byproducts are worse than what they what they give you is always worse for you than it helps. <laughs> but we're so spoiled in this time in, in history that if we had to do all the all our food and fucking growing our own food and digging water and all, uh, we'd be like Africans. <laughs> yeah. Where's the fucking water? Pray to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> wow. And, and you know what? I still think that you guys got to learn. There's only like a handful of Jews on the planet. Okay. And, well, they're not like really tough people. They're more like whiners. Okay. Mm-hmm. On on the, on the, now they, they have their offspring, this less than intelligent offspring. They raise and for killing machines, soldiers. But those people were they were born to do that. That was their reason. <laughs> That's a different world. And then we get and then we get the shit about <laughs> that they're reclaiming the land. Yeah. Hmm? Well, does does anybody ever take a look at an old map like pre fourteen hundred and see what that map says? <laughs> it doesn't say Israel. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need to go back that far. So I saw a link the other day. There's some old movie, nineteen forties movie, showed Palestine right there. Yeah. See, and this is all. See, this is all this global group secret society shit. This is the proof right. that, that they exist. Because only yeah. only a group of pricks 
would do to p people what we have willingly allowed to have happen. Because we were, if we were told the truth, we wouldn't. But they lie to us, so we we fall for it. Look at the advertising: yeah. uh, fluoride in your water is good for your teeth. Whoops. <laughs> Not so much. No, but how long did they get away with saying that? They still do. They put it in uh, face makeup for women, fluoride. For 60, 70 years or whatever. And people do not, they don't listen to this side of that story. <sighs> I'm very sad, Rob. No, it can't happen here. Whoops. <laughs> 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 And our government would never do anything to hurt us. <laughs> they love us. Oh, so. I know, like a like a newborn baby. Bring that yeah. little baby over here a second. Shoot it up full of poison. Yeah. Four months old, or sometimes younger too. Yeah. What is wrong with the adult that the adult doesn't know? You don't. Put poison into a human body. <laughs> Are you stupid? An hours old and they're shooting them. Oh, shit. Okay, how do they get the consent to do this to a, a newborn child? <laughs> well, they tell you you either do it or we're going to take your kid away from you because failure to do it is neglect. Right. See? So, oh, so we're caught in this loop. And, and then when you... Yeah. When you try to explain to other folk in the real physical world, this applies to medicine, finance, insurance, food, all the big things that you call necessities in life, electricity, all your fuel sources of any kind of fuel that we need. Boom. Poison, second rate, shit all over, just to make some billionaire goddamn more money. And the population just, oh, oh, I want to be like him so bad. He's rich. They don't even know there is a him to be. We're just told stories and showed videos now or links or whatever it is. So how do you know what truth there is in life? You just make it up as you go, just like everybody else, I would suppose. Yeah. Well, you just look at everything, believe nothing, make up your own mind. I just think it's too much trouble to revolution jazz because you got to go steal somebody's land and occupy it, and then you got to pick a fight with the Queen of England about who owns the land that you're occupying. And it, see, yeah. when you when I look at the broader picture and think months at a time, you know. Here we are, took so many, you know, physical trips to get messages back and forth. And what? This guy, you know, 3,000 miles from here is going to tell this guy to murder everybody in paper, you know, on notes. Yeah. The whole thing seems a little stupid to me, but apparently... Or, you know, they would train people like they do here in, in the States now. They train people in Israel, the Israeli shit that the Israelis do to Palestine. They teach all that shit to the American cops. So, mm -hmm. Palestine is fucking practice for what's coming to America. It always has been. It's just been slower increments. It's mostly in paper in America, but it's coming. They got people living outside in tents. America, the entire world. Well, I'm from they America. Here to be the rulers of the entire planet, right? And there'll be little, little be their servants and slaves and <laughs> serve them and take care of them. <laughs> yeah, but little places they, will break. They, all right, they don't, they don't make no bones about it either. They'll tell you you're you're here to be my slave. All right, how did Cuba survive? If you're lucky. I will I will accept you as my slave. And let you live. Then how did Cuba survive all this last what, 60 years now? 70 years? I don't know. 59? Well, no, they're as old as I am. Just because that says what they want, I mean, they're going to get it. No, 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 no. It's not what I mean. 
Okay. Cuba has always been Cuba since I can remember. Okay. Uh-huh. Cuba is only a, like a 90 mile long island. It's not very big, landmass yeah. wise. How did it survive all these years? Barely. No central bank. I, I don't know. I wouldn't have wanted to live there. Well, okay, maybe I'm not asking the question right. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the way yeah, the, 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 the way that the way they did the uh, Arab thing, you know, with the Jews, they put the Jews right in the middle of fucking uh, the Middle East, right on the water. Mm-hmm. Boom. All right. Well, here's Cuba. Why didn't they invade Cuba and put the Jews there instead? What's the difference between where they are and where they could have been? They could have moved them somewhere else. And then when you think about it, Cuba has never been taken over by anybody. Why not? It, God gave that land to the Jews. No, right, but they're talking all this world global dominance bullshit then either the stories we hear about Cuba are bullshit and they are part of the game or they're not. So secret secret society crap again, that conspiracy thing. Because who do you trust? What stories do you... Have you ever been told the truth about a place you went to visit? How would you even know if you did? By going to visit it. Oh, you mean before you before you've gone to see it, then you go and find out what it's really like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm, uh, yeah, it's never what you expect. Well, based on the stories you've been told. And, okay, and, yeah, yeah. Because I got told horrid stories about Texas. I don't know. And I got told horrible stories about Georgia. Or what other place? Now that was, I uh, think maybe all, me- Mississippi. All over the country, and people are all the same. I, I know that. They ain't, they ain't better or worse than the other ones. They all suck equally. Well, that that's where me and you. I don't. Yeah. Well, maybe not. It's hard to. It's hard to say. It's like a. I don't really want to yeah. sit in the judgment. I'm a little more seat. than others, but yeah. I would say, well, I would narrow it down, Rob, to, for myself and, and say uh, people are in positions of power or decision, but not everybody. No. So, you know, when I hear, when I read, and they all suck, I go right to the politicians and the scholars and the, you know, religious nuts. Not, not people that don't fuck with anyone. They don't belong in that group. They didn't do anything. And I'm not all about punishment anyway. If I see you no. do it, I might hit you with a brick, but I'd never call the fucking law on your ass. Mm-hmm. No, that's not something I do. Yeah, but I've never had the problem. See, I've got such a charm life. Things could have gone so horribly wrong, <laughs> and yet here I am, you know. And all the crazy, all these crazy trips to Europe and England and <laughs> and surviving everything. That that's the part. It seems like the uh, the medical system was the the enemy, not not life and, and drugs and all this. <laughs> it was the the safe place was the exact opposite of what, what it was told. I was told it was. Oh, I'm just out of quote. I'll post this in the chat. I don't think anybody's posted it. What do you got? <laughs> uh oh. Oh well, I'll I'll get. Yeah, I was trying to uh, see what he was up to, but I give up. I'm way slower. I'm easier to on the talking than I am on the opening links and reading chat and stuff. That's yeah. what messes me up. Yeah, reading and talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, oh, duh, all I hear is a lighter clicking. Oh, whoops. I'm 
usually doing two or three or four things at once. So Yeah, you're a multitasker. I know I'm a yakky and, and you're busy. Um, That's cool. Editing a web page um, and uh, posting quotes in the chat room. Cool. And I, I was looking at some of my notes about possible. And the Bill Let me read this quote. Oh, go I'm ahead. Oh, I get it now. Yep. And the bewildered herd is still believing everything we've been told from our birth. Hell, they won't lie to me, not on my own damn TV. But how much is a liar's word worth? And what happened to peace on her? I think it took a holiday. No, well, we don't. This well, a lot, duh. The, <laughs> we're, we're pretty much on the same page about a lot of most things. Right, but in reality, in the physical world, the, the TV sets the mood about who your enemies are. So you know who yeah. they are. Yeah. But, uh, you know, let's rate the quality of your life by what you know about what's going on in a country 10,000 miles away from where you are. And I thought about what is the point of all that? What What's the reasoning behind it? And I came up with, they don't want me to be thinking in the moment I'm in. They want me to be thinking about something else at another time, so I waste that time doing that instead of something productive. Right. Well, okay, trying to uh, explain this particular concept over the years has been difficult because it, 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 the idea evolves into new things. You know, and the quality of your life, how people judge their own as opposed to somebody else's. It's got to be two different scales. You know, like, what made people ever think of making smoking pot illegal to make it a crime to smoke a, a flower? I mean, uh, Rotten producers. Yeah, but what kind of evil fucking genius mind thought of, hey, you know what we could do? <laughs> Uh, we can fuck them all with one law. Yeah. Oh, did I ever tell you the joke about the grandpa bull and his grandson standing up on top of the hill? And the grandson bull, he pulls on his daddy's mane and he says, Granddaddy, Granddaddy, let's run down the hill and go fuck us a cow. And Granddaddy smiles and looks down the sun. Let's walk down and fuck them all. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the Jew way. <laughs> it's the saddest fucking thing in the world to be related to these goddamn greedy motherfuckers by, you know, whatever their religious belief or blood or whatever the fuck the thing is. Because I... Well, I think I can use that yeah, as a way to blame. complain about them. But, well, because the people that are using it today are not what they're claiming to be. It's very fucked up, very convoluted. So much deceit and storytelling and lies involved in it. It involves religion. So it's such a topic that you can't even question certain shit because people would lose their fucking minds. But... They can fuck 10-year-old kids in the ass, and, you know, that's okay. They yeah, just pay some money to take care of it. It's okay. Yeah. Well, those are the things that I don't see, right? They're out of my realm, out of my reality and all that. But that's how I rate some kind of quality of life. Is Why would that even be a thought? in the first place, let alone a lawsuit against a church. <laughs> but we're not taught that we're raised to bo to grow up, to do the shit that we're supposedly not doing. <laughs> I, I, okay, since Larry Wood it, it explained the uh, electrical thing to me in a way I understood enough of it to make some sense of it all, I come out of it with the answer that 
if they produced a better quality of product, I would have a better quality of existence, physically. Yeah. And I'm a dummy dumb head, Rob. <laughs> so, uh, what I mean is, Larry was a very smart man, but he spoke in a way to me that I understood and that could make sense of it. So I went, wow, thank you. <laughs> That's how you know somebody knows what they're talking about, if you can explain it. In a simple, yeah, sometimes, well, some of these topics. We really understand the subject of talking about. And you've got hands-on experience in it in areas where I don't. I worked with a, an electrician doing menial shit for him, not, nothing real big. Yeah. So it was a, it was a hot job, but it was still, a, man, he managed me pretty good. Except for one night, I got stoned, and, and he says, don't touch that light. And I heard, take that light. So when it blew me off the freaking wall, because it was hot as fuck, uh, he says, oh, you figured out how welding was invented, huh? Stupid, I told you not that light. <laughs> I said, oh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> well, he was a good friend of mine. I, on top of it all, we're drinking buddies, smoking buddies. Yeah. He's not going to fire me for fucking up and, you know, hurting myself. Now, if I had fucked yeah. up and hurt him, that no, might, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might have had to hitchhike home to the valley, you know, from where we were. And we were working in the worst place in Hollywood that existed. Mm. I don't think I've talked about it on this particular show before. But, yeah, we were... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Santa Monica Boulevard and Vine. Okay. Where they cross is like, in those days, this is back in the 90s, good Lord, late 90s, right? <laughs> hey, he picks up a remodeled job for him. This production company wants to upgrade a floor of this building, a whole floor. And they uh -huh. just want to replace and upgrade. Not a big, in, in, for me, just to follow his directions and put this here and put this there. Yeah. But it was in the weirdest part of Hollywood. So when we had to break for lunch, we had to walk uh, up the street where all the transvestites and hookers. <laughs> it was <laughs> the wildest. Yeah, but me and Brian didn't give a shit. You know, we're, we're from L.A., so this is kind of like normal. But when you're working, you know, it's it's like, 10.30 at night, you're going to go get lunch. The, the atmosphere felt different. You know, it, yeah. it was like predatory at that point. <laughs> because here we are, two guys going to get lunch, but we're, we're in the worst possible neighborhood in, in the city to do it. <laughs> right. So, well, we, we didn't do it very many times. We gave up and started driving places. So bringing shit with you. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, we or, were we're driving somewhere. Yeah, me and Brian had a well, we had it made. Two single guys with no responsibilities, so the money was unimportant. It was good enough money to support both of us, really <clears throat> comfortable. So for what we were doing, I mean, not wealthy, but just comfort. Yeah. So yeah, but the work was fun. <laughs> so if it cost a few dollars, you know, to go somewhere else to eat, it was worth the investment to not have to walk down. Santa Monica Boulevard at night with all the funny people. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, but see, oh, that's what I mean. It's, and now I'm in Denmark, right? Uh -huh. Well, this is just one of many places I've been, but <laughs> this is one of the longest stays outside of uh, California. Or, well, let me think. No, so I was in North Carolina from a beginning to an end point where right? I first time I went into it to the last time I left it. But in the middle, there were times where I left it. <laughs> so it, it's been one of those kind of lives. Travel, 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 travel. Stop for a while. Travel, travel, travel. Yeah, I did a lot of that. So. Where's your favorite place you ever went? Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of Germany. Why? Just different. And what years were you there? I was there in 82. 
Ah, well, that explains that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was still cool, and they still liked Americans back then somewhat. Well, some of them them hated Americans, but generally speaking, most Germans still liked Americans back then. Um, But they had uh, the Eurail Pass thing. It bought a Eurail Pass. It's a car you can get on any train in Europe and just go anywhere you want. (laughs) I'm sorry, Rob. I was reading the chat while you were talking. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy! <laughs> but, uh, I was working emergency room three uh, three day shifts, three days on, three days off, twelve hour shifts. Anyways, I get off a twelve hour shift and go jump on a train, and go to sleep, and wherever I woke up, I'd go. Walk around, check it out, see what there is to see. Back in Germany, right? In Germany, yeah. Yeah, and they've got the, probably the best building engineering that's available. Like their fucking windows. Oh, Damn, yeah. you ever see a, how a German window yeah. works? You'll you'll wonder why you ever bought the shit you got. But you know, yep. well, that's one of my big beefs with this the world. But yeah, you were saying, Jim. Mine too, yep. They built shit to break now. And, and we were there at a time, the 80s were way, see, everybody says this about the time they were in, though. Yeah. But we were there in, in a time that was just as special for us as the 50s were to my dad in England. Yeah. Yeah. So, I come from a family of guys that goes across the ocean to go get a wife. <laughs> Only I didn't bring mine back. She wouldn't come. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but my mom left America screaming in 1982. Didn't want nothing to do. Never became a citizen, my mom. It's always a English subject. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the English owned her paperwork. But... Yeah. Yeah, but they only, I was, uh, they did some law stuff, right, because of Obama, that the uh, birthright is of the father, not of the mother in England. Right, okay. And it was, like, active for my brother, but not for me. So okay. what that I guess what it meant in so many ways is I wasn't uh I wasn't going to be accepted because I was my the birthright was to my mom but my brother was going to be okay because that law changed to the father. <laughs> when Obama when on Obama's birthday which was before his birthday mm-hmm. but after my birthday different the year thing, the way the year works out. Because he was born the following year after me. Okay. Right. Well, this is how uh, laws. These people are, we don't even know what the laws mean. I mean, I can't read. Rob, you're going to like this. I don't think I could understand a freaking law and if I read it. It wouldn't really make sense to me. I'd just be understanding certain words I'm reading out of order. Yeah, they're 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 made that way. Well, I know that, but I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy though. In order to understand a law, you have to understand everything that law references, and all the laws are always referencing some other. <laughs> That's sweet. It's because it's a word game. It is. It's yeah. pure work. It's all. It has nothing to do with truth or justice or fair or bullshit like that. Legally, he uses terms of art. Commerce. Yeah. What, what, how, and you know, you ever listen to Clint, Clint Richardson talk about that? Not so much. You see why. I recommend it. I bet you'd even enjoy it. Pick up a random link of uh, the You See Why, the Shalai Lama guy. They play them on YouTube on pretty much every week or so. Okay. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe you've had enough. But some people, they know how to explain things in fashion that nobody else has ever attempted. 
And Clint has a version of life based on his understanding of the Bible, which he doesn't really do anything more than make sense of what he reads. <laughs> You know, trying to define the words and based out of this is where they fucking came from. This, now he takes some things into areas that go too far for me. I don't, I don't care enough. But then some things I'm really interested in, like the definitions of words. Yeah. Look at how hard Vinny worked on the Bundy Ranch. Now, if you take a look at the legal definitions of the words that the, the Bundys are going to go to court over, I don't think it'll hold up in court in the Bundys' favor. In court, legally. Because what the words mean is not what they think the words mean. Yeah. The, yeah. the definition of the words mean something so fucking completely different than what they're fighting for. They're, by the time they find out, it's going to be too late. Yeah, well, I think Hal even reached out to him too, and they didn't want none of it. So, wow. Do do? Well, right, because they're religious people too, and they're gonna let God take care of it. Yeah. Well, that's what religious people do. They they blame the fate. You know, they blame the fate if it goes badly. Well, that's the way God wanted it. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, they get prepped with all that Jesus stuff about sacrificing his kid and sin and all that horse shit. Well, okay, Clint Richardson uses his ways to define the word sin and what the original word meant, which has been updated and rearranged and changed to suit a certain idea. When it doesn't mean what you think it means, they just use that word to explain that when it doesn't even mean that. And, and a lesser mind than mine will argue the fact, and go, oh, well, that's just a bunch of st stories, blah, blah, blah. Well, hmm. when you look at reality, <laughs> and you compare that to the stories that you were told in school, wow. Hmm. I can see your point there, sport. Yeah. So when you were doing trauma in, in Germany, you were military, right? Yeah, I was Air Force. Yeah, Air three Air days Air. on, three days off. Yeah, so I, I I lived with a paramedic for a while, so that lifestyle, boy, it's hard to be in a, a pair bonded relationship with somebody that lives those those kind of um, hours. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty hell, especially if you're young and like to party and do things. <laughs> well, yeah, I would say it would be a job that somebody over 40 would be more suited for because of the, uh, yeah, the possibilities of the timing's not, not working out well. Like, you're so limited on your days off, your time off, because while you're working, because you can't do anything in your time off that could fuck with you going back to work. So you're really not ever off the damn clock. <laughs> no. It's, well, it's well, my version of... Yeah, my version of... Saying, to eat, do anything you want to do, and then be back at work again in 12 hours. So... Well, what was the best lesson you learned from that particular part of the you know, lifestyle? I would I would assume from living amongst the paramedics and the cops it would be the ability not to panic when you see something really bad you know, in life to not panic over it. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, these are the same people. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, but to me these guys they have kind of a boring job, the paramedic people. Right? Most of the time, yeah. yeah. I was playing a lot of chess with well, a German chess teacher while I was there. Well, I'm a kind of a practical joker or do something shocking when I was around these people. And somebody gives me a call and she says, ah, we're going to stop by the house. I need to pick something up. I had like 20 minutes. So I took a funnel that was bigger, as big as my head, and I 
duct taped something around it or something to it. And then when they came in the house, it had a coat hanger on it. <laughs> and I was trying to just sit there at the computer like I was playing this game like everything was normal as they came in to go get what they were going to get because there was three of them. And mm-hmm. and it, w- it made them laugh because they're bored, they're bored paramedics and I'm doing a practical joke. I guess it doesn't translate so good on the radio, but, you know. No, not the funnel and the coat hanger thing. Well, yeah, because I'm a grown man, but I've got the sense of humor of like a 15-year-old sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to tease this. I used to tease this girlfriend about this uh, pocketbook thing she did. She had one of these little clutch things that she carries around in her hands. Yeah. And would constantly be putting it down somewhere. <clears throat> and I've lived with women all my life, and I'm telling you. When they got a pocketbook, purse thing, they're more careful about it. A little thing, you know, the size of their hand is different. Yeah. And yeah. I, I told her, I, out of nowhere, I just, you know, you're going to, you're going to lose your freaking wallet here soon if you don't start paying attention where you put it and let it go. And then I get a phone call. Hey, you know what, you fucker, you're right. I lost my fucking wallet. Uh, I got to come all the way back home and get on the computer and stop this and start that and all that shit, right? So mm-hmm. while, while she's coming home, I get my my Batman pajamas and a beer, <laughs> pack cigarettes, in a bathrobe. <laughs> so when she comes in, I got this. I got this robe, and I open the robe, and my tool belt with the cigarettes and the beer in it. So <laughs> instead of you know, and, and she says, "I figured when I got here, you'd be like, I told you so, you stupid blah, blah, blah. And I thought, why put her through all that misery when she already lost her fucking wallet? <laughs> how much? Yeah, how much old. worse could it get? Some idiot yelling at you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so instead, like with the coat hanger in the funnel thing, I was trying to make light of a bad situation. You know, people have to do right. shit they don't want to do, but they do it. You know, and fuck, yeah. it's a it's a tough world, Rob. Really yes. is. But what's the what's the toughest thing you've ever had to endure yourself? Mine was the surgeries, the physical surgery. Oh, uh, getting 13 teeth yanked out all at once. Oh, son of a bitch. You're tough. That teeth Especially are, the front, front tooth. Teeth are bad, yeah. Front two upper teeth. Oh, God. So you why did you deny yourself the luxury of teeth? Pulled, tell them you want to be fucking knocked. Out. Yeah, well, I was good. I was trying to ask you why did you deny yourself the luxury of in total intoxication? Uh, it wasn't up to me. I wasn't paying for it. Oh, okay. But still, well, still in the long run, probably the best thing you could have done for yourself. <laughs> in the long run, because uh, of all the additives yeah. in our food and our water supplies. Yeah. Well. And the Mine maintenance was, supplies too. Jesus, this bad things and drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, and that's what I mean. Is you know, a lot of people that know, and that's all that matters is that they know how they got where they're at. That ah, it's all subjective. You know, one guy's horror story is another guy's boring Tuesday morning. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah. I've seen yep. people lose it over uh, not having the, the right food brought to them in a restaurant. Oh, I knew a guy like that. Wow, but get angry. and Instead, it's just, yep. no, this isn't exactly what I wanted. To be so fucking picky and petty. And oh, I, I knew a guy exactly like that. Knew. I mean, <laughs> Past tense. <laughs> Did you kill him, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Rob. I didn't mean that at all. It was a bad joke on the In a Perfect World podcast. I will admit. <laughs> Nothing wrong with thinking. <laughs> thinking is a prerequisite to an action. Heal, man. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know that there's people that think? 
actresses cry. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. You know, there's still people that think voting matters. And I will never understand where they come up with that concept. Voting matters. Yeah. Why? You don't, vote, you're, you, you don't have any right to complain. But where did they get the idea about the voting matters part? After the Electoral College and everybody understands what it, they do. And they'll, they tell you, this guy, their vote's got nothing to do with you. What have you? Well, did we've you been vote voting for this country for what two hundred fifty years? And it's, <laughs> and it's been steadily worse the whole time. <laughs> I think we had enough of an experiment here to determine, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that voting does not fucking work. Hello. Yeah. Well. Okay. So they started the country in seventeen seventy six, right? The Declaration. Blah blah blah. When? Yeah, well, when did the, the federal when, government start? A little later than that. But, yeah, but yeah, when did the first election take place where people voted? <laughs> uh, and they carried the, the ballots on horseback from county to county. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. <laughs> that, makes, yeah. that would make sense. I get it now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And that's how it began. Well, my belief is that it really ended in like 18, what, 12 or 14, somewhere in that era. When they burnt, when they burnt Washington, D.C. to the ground, they burnt, I mean, leveled. But here's the story I read. They miraculously, John Adams had books that were burnt in the fires. <laughs> okay. wow. wow, what a lifesaver. Now, the Constitution, we're, we're, this is 200 and something years ago, right? So we're going to believe whatever bullshit story we're told by the experts. Do they have the original fucking document that they're all harping about in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> How many people would even think of asking a question like that? And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's... A question. Oh, God. Well, it just strikes me as odd that the English didn't even physically leave Washington, D.C. until uh, <laughs> 1797. But they still reinvaded. <laughs> They never left. <laughs> it's real yeah. to me. I I I You're see this. Getting the whole story, man. I'm not getting the whole story. Okay, what am I missing? I think that's the part we don't know. That's what I'm saying. You don't. You don't. Everything's done in a back room somewhere. The shit you read in the history books and you hear on the news. Is the story they came up with in the back room that they're going to tell everybody? <laughs> yeah, you got that right. <laughs> wow. Now Mary's good with that too. You've got to figure out how to read between the lines and go. Okay, mm. what were the? Yeah. What was the real the reasoning behind this or that? Once you've watched it long enough, you kind of start to figure out. Hey, Whatever it is, is they're going to fuck you one way or the other. Well, then we're going to call that comply or die. Pretty much. Well, that's the two choices I see. No matter how, how I look at it or how... One way or the other, you're going. And then, gets up. I think another, another thing that really helped me was uh, the Cirque thing. Because I can look at my prison... With a smile, you know. Well, it's instead of a government, I you know, I connected with a, a life form, you know, carbon-based being. Yeah, I think that's a big difference than a uh, a government. Yeah, I mean, even my I think I don't know who it was. My brother-in-law, he told me that we were out drinking on about a week ago. <laughs> anyway, he says to, out of nowhere, he says, 
You know, if anything was to happen to Circle, I don't see you staying here very long. And I went, yeah, you know that. But then he changed the subject. But he just went, yeah, you wouldn't want to be here. <laughs> he no, can't. well, you wouldn't have a real reason to be there. No, but these people treat me very well. I mean, their company is, <laughs> it's unbelievable that how welcoming they've been for marrying into their family. He's a married into the family, Dennis. Yeah. But he's been okay. married to her sister for 15 years or something like that. they got a 15-year-old yeah. son. So, but, wow. So, I mean, why would you want to stay there if, I mean, you... I wouldn't. Anything. No, I wouldn't. It was just strange for him to say that. I mean, it makes sense anyway. It's right. Not your, I know, but still, it's, it's really the only reason you're there. She's what's keeping you there. And Yeah, I, I took it as quite the compliment to his sister-in-law. That's why I yeah. took it. Wow, she, he knows that if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> and all the shit I put up with because... I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, social. You know, people in, uh, in Danish has protocols. And somebody was misbehaving. Dennis took it to heart. Didn't, he wasn't pleased. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, it's something that uh, cultures know. Your own culture has certain guidelines you behave by. Right. And, and somebody was rude to him in front of me, and he didn't like it at all. He was pissed. And I was like, yeah, blow it off. Don't worry about it. But, you know, there you see, it's all a matter of interpretation. You know, how, and I call it this. When I met at Cirque, I try to remember how much of my time do I want to spend carrying around some stupid thing that happened, you know, however back. 10 minutes ago to a year ago to six years ago. And I got to carry that around to be throwing it around. You know? So I try not to do that shit with people. Except yeah. Hansel. Because Hansel, Hansel begs me to come into this room and fight with him. Oh, uh, Silver and Gold just jumped. Oh, get prepared. They're going to, you know, they're going to uh, kill the Petro dollar soon. Maybe not too soon. Gold's breaking 16 and silver's breaking 18. Yeah, I see that. But do you, you think they're going to keep the petrodollar alive much longer? Hmm? I have no idea. I keep I asking. They're... No, I, who does? Ah, it was a conversation piece on the In a Perfect World, I Rob. <laughs> uh, they're going to blow it up sooner or later, whatever their timetable is, is anyone's yeah. guess. Well, you aren't you optimistic? <laughs> I just know it's coming. Well, you know, I've, I've been I've been watching it for so long, and it's up and down, up and down. And every time you think, "Oh, here, this is it. Here we go, here we go," and then back back down. Hey, you know what? Um, I got a, a technical kind of question for you, personally. Not personal question, but you personally for this question. Okay. Are we poisoned within the legal limits of the law? What do you know about that particular idea? Well, if not, they'll just raise the legal limits, like they did with the radiation. Well, oh, okay, um, what radiation? Right. Yeah, you know they changed the radiation acceptable limits. They raised it right after Fukushima. <laughs> from what to, yeah. <clears throat> what does it take to understand what the, uh -oh. but what does it take to understand what the legal limits are uh, got that weird scratchy sound again oh okay yeah I heard that I thought it was you uh oh well we've got some kind of problem here there, got it fixed. I don't oh, know why. Okay, sorry about that. Listening, people out there in Radio Land. That was weird. I didn't change anything either. It just started happening. Mm, okay, but we're, you know we're being poisoned within the law, be, within the limits of the law. And you were talking about radio radioactive poisoning, right? Radiation yeah, poisoning. They raised the acceptable limits of 
radiation, the background radiation or what exposure mm-hmm. right after Fukushima. Well, how how in depth of a knowledge of nuclear do you need to understand what these uh, numbers represent? And then are they talking in legal terms or are they talking in physical reality terms? They're talking in, well, yeah, everything they do is legal terms. Ouch. Okay. Because uh, are you aware that they the, the meaning of the word waste in the nuclear business does not mean waste? Well, yeah, it's just a byproduct of the process. It doesn't necessarily mean it's waste. Right. So to apply to the product they're trying to get, too, right? <laughs> it's so convoluted. And this is what I mean. These secret societies, it's called the Bar Association. you got to apply to join it. you got to swear an oath to Satan that you'll suck every Jewcock you ever find and blah, 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 blah. It's insane. And people think yep. I'm I'm talking out the fucking side of my neck. Do you know that there's uh, somebody's in, wait, I forget what state, but just to change it one more time. <laughs> there's somebody uh, is trying to argue about um, having to support Israel to run for office in America. It's one of those seats. I think it's a congressional seat in a southern state. And they're yep. challenging having to pledge allegiance to Israel to run for the seat. And went, wow, it's about time. Somebody said no. Sorry, Rob, I just had one of those brain farts. (laughs) That's what I call them. (laughs) Smoke a couple of pipe loads over a a, In a Perfect World show. (laughs) And I'm liable to ask or say anything. So, there you go. We only got a few minutes left. (laughs) <laughs> I've been yeah, interrupting you. Know, I'm going to need to bow out a little bit earlier. Okay? Well, that's okay, Rob. Thanks for coming along. I, I was interrupting you all the time anyway. <laughs> uh, I enjoy it. I, uh, I'm good with that. But it's, I'm a good. it was nice to hear that uh, somebody had a good time in Germany, too. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's not the people of any fucking place. It's the government that's holding it. Oh, the people were great. Yeah, man. people same. were free. There you go. Just like anybody everywhere else. Yeah. The same goes with across the states. You know, all the states, the people are the people. They did. You got, you got a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. You know, but generally speaking, people are friendly and courteous. Um, I will say Arkansas people are seem to be even more friendly than most of them. Yeah. I mean, they wave at you going down the road here still. And well, that's kind of, yeah. I, it's like here. You know, when you yeah. each other on the sidewalk or whatever, they'll, they'll wait, you know. Other places, you know, people look down and look away and, you know. Yeah, I call it recognizing their the New York or Chicago or L.A. <laughs> I call it recognizing yeah. their humanity. Yeah, just recognizing your existence. Yeah, because the neighbors and passers by here do that. We engage and recognize there's another person there. It's not just my sidewalk and you're on it. You know, hey, yeah. how you doing? Or not, yeah. or something. Yeah, you got Yeah, doesn't take a lot of effort. No. <laughs> anyway, thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks coming for along you. too. Appreciate uh, it. You only got a few minutes left. Oh, I can close I will, up just fine. I'll be in and out of the chat as I work on this website and stuff. Oh yeah, did you want to post the, your new site on the on the notes? No, no it's not close to ready. Oh, no, okay. No. Well, then we'll we'll just make no, a mental part note. Of part of this. Okay, that's well, not for public dissemination yet. <laughs> okay, I appreciate you coming. <laughs> thanks a lot for the uh, right. and thanks for the trip down memory road, both mine and yours. I like yeah, I like to hear where other people have been too. And yeah, yeah. You brought up Germany, and yeah, I I don't want to go to Germany now because of the the world we're right. in, not not the people. Wait, 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 people there. Fuck, I drink with Germans. All right, all right, my friend. Thank you so much, Rob. And uh, that's going to wrap up a whole nother 
you know, Perfect World Podcast. And tonight, we were calling it, We Believe in Stories That Use Secrecy to, pr- to Prove the Belief is Real. <laughs> so, that might be a title to think about for a minute or two out there in radio land. And I had a lot of fun talking, interrupting Rob. And, but Rob, Rob's got some good shit, man. He was a trauma paramedic. He, 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 and he reminded me of so many things I've done. It's hard to be you know, stoned and silent at the same time. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for everybody uh, that played along with us in the Arlen chat. And we got to, I guess we could do a schedule for you. We've got coming up tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, we've got Lonnie Clark. I'm thinking it's noon on the East Coast with um, her new show. I can't think. Uh, hmm. I, let me just open up the damn Real Liberty, Real Liberty Media page. i got another couple minutes here. But I'll just do it from the page instead of memory. I know it's Lonnie's show, and I listen to it. And I can disagree with things, and it doesn't mean anything more than that. You know, I, if I agreed with it or not, it doesn't change its reality. So I try to, you know, make that as a point to think about. I'm just talking, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I'm not looking for re- any results. Okay, so tomorrow, Wednesday at noon o'clock is The Age of Vision with Lonnie Clark. And then Thursday, we have uh, After the Achelia Effect at 8 on Channel 14. You got the Power Hour with Prince Zipex and Rotten Socks. And uh, hey, th- thanks for back at you, Sock Puppet. And then we've got uh, on Friday, we've got uh, Vinny is currently on hiatus due to technical equipment issues. Uh, Ponder Gander will, with Vin E on Arlen, will return soon. Just not yet. And then a Chelly ad channel on 8 at channel 14. And then at 11, the Freakers Ball with Grimner and Moose Girl. And then the next day, Saturday, is me. Uh, what is me? on the dark table at 2 p.m. on the East Coast. And sometimes I got Grammy and sometimes I don't. And uh, Vinny had a... Uh, he had a show that he's he's down still. Da, da, da. And then Sunday rolls around. Got the Blues at noon with Grimner on Arlen Radio. And then Behind the Woodshed with Hal Anthony at uh, 2 p.m. Let, let me see. I'm reading this wrong. Well, it says two. Hmm. Wow, well, it says two p.m. Something I might be mis mis saying the time. I thought he comes on at noon on Sunday mm-hmm. uh, on the West Coast. Well, do the schedule. It's a little bit late here in Denmark. I might be bleary eyed, and I was just uh, doing something different, reading to the uh, mainstream folk out there. The possibilities of RLM radio and all that. So, what else have we got? I guess we don't have much more than uh, a happy Roger Wilco. Let me find my button so I can end it. Roger Wilco over and out, people. <laughs>